time again. I like the first ban from Fnatic. Oduamne is fantastic on tanks. Take Maokai away, and you either force him on Nar or to pick something completely different that's not tank related. Oh, yes, indeed. We'll see. The strategy reigns supreme this time around. H2K going for the ban. Huni, Strat, Fnatic. Is Hegram going to be the last one? Is it going to be? That is the question. Because we know he's, he's going to play it. Malka's off the board. Not if if it's much. left open now, he will go for Hegram. Obviously, Lissandra is a flex pick for them. We know Febivan likes to play it in the mid lane. And then steal by has gone for Graves. Every single time he had the chance the last few weeks, not exactly a first pick we would expect from H2K. So you can go for that in the first rotation, and then suddenly you got a winning lane, which Fnatic has used the last few weeks compared to the first ones. But they played like Corky, and Steelback will always fall really far behind. I'll see what Fnatic does take as their last ban. They have a couple options here as the timer ticks down the Zed ban against Febivin, of course. And what will it be? It's a Lulu. So there is... Yeah, no Juggermaw. There is no Juggermaw here. once again. They played that obviously last week, and Major Makers didn't really have a chance, honestly. As soon as we got outside of the laning phase, it was all about H2K and Yarn and just running around killing people left and right. So that's now been taken away. Have we, had it been like, you know, 5.4, we've been... Oh, Rek'Sai. Rek'Sai's open here. Should but be now the first there's a now. lot of them. But other now there's so many junglers, and, and, and a lot of teams Give, now suddenly have like less value on first picking a jungler because there's so many other good options. Yes, Rek'Sai is still the best in terms of the early game, or well, her, her, I'm about to say him, her and Nidalee will be the best for like early pressure. Rek'Sai is a girl. But the thing is, exactly, it, when it comes to big team fights, the big tanks are obviously a lot better. So if you do go Rek'Sai, if you do go Nidalee, you got to make plays early on. you got to use that champion to create a lead. And that's also why we don't see Rek'Sai being first picked but instead, Kassin gets his Annie. Also, take away from Yellow Star, who's normally gone Thresh or Janna if Annie, Annie is gone. Well, you know, Kassin hasn't lost on. He hasn't lost on a lot of champions, in all fairness, but uh, it's definitely served him well. Fnatic now have some choices to make of their own. Hovering the Nidalee right now. We will just take that Graves again. For. We know Steelback likes Graves early on here. Sivir is open, which has been a big pick for H2K as well. So, Juani. So, Fnatic's not taking anything in terms of the AD carries. And yeah, no Rek'Sai, no Nidalee, no, we go for the big tanks. We get level 6, and then we start creating plays for Rainover and of course the Blanc for Fabian. Honestly, a bit of a hit and miss champion, despite him having a fairly insane KD on it. He is a very safe mid laner in many ways, and when he plays LeBlanc, and if he sees an opening and kills the enemy support, that tends to be enough for him, and therefore, even if he's 5 6 0, he doesn't really have the biggest impact. We're gonna have to see what he can do today on LeBlanc, and if he can get to these carries here and not just kill the poor support every time. <laughs> not just kill the poor support. Well, it'll be a little easier for him to kill if that's uh, what he's targeting out this time with the Annie. But let's see what H2K decides to lock in here, potentially favoring the Caitlyn. We haven't seen as much Gnar lately, mm -hmm. and it does get locked in. Yeah, this is the thing. When you ban Maokai against Oduamne, if he still wants to play a tank, he just... Cyan has not been a pick we've seen him use in, in quite a while, and he's... Fallback has been Gnar. He used to be undefeated on it, now he lost obviously against Elements because they played around his ulti so well. And Gnar has received quite a lot of nerfs the last few patches. Obviously, longer cooldown before you can get your Mega Gnar again, which is what you need for these big team fights. So it's easier to play around this Gnar, and a lot of regions don't even play it anymore. They feel like, no, it's too risky now. But Odo Amna is still picking it. I want to see what he can do because he did not have a good game against Elements on this champion. Yeah, potentially a risky move for H2K. We'll see what Fnatic answer for. Yeah, so we know obviously now the 2-2 lane for H2K is going to be absolutely insane. So Fnatic can pick around that and say we're going to take a lane swap lane instead. We mm. don't necessarily have to go for that uh, for that Graves and try and win the lane. And Hoonies we said it with the, the horse. Ban. When they didn't have to take it right away. No, when Rumble and Lissandro's banned away, you know he's going to go for that he, Hecarim. He knows. Oh, of course. He's ready to play it. That's this is his style of champion. Oh, yes. Focus on making plays through teleports and roaming. He's he's a top laner who never really aims to kill people on his own. He will always be with his team. He always want to set up things together with the rest of the Fnatic members. And that's where a home guard teleport Hecarim <laughs> is just perfect. Oh, yes, indeed. And we'll also have Nezreal this time since there is a little Blanc locked in. Shouldn't be going over to Febiv instead. It's going to be okay. Steelback making yeah. his debut on this. They might just do Janna as real, which is a super safe lane. Oh, yeah. But you have zero kill pressure. Like, you just sit and farm. That's all you do. It's going to force a lot of attention elsewhere, too. 
curious to see what they end up going for there. This is the standard then into LeBlanc when Zed is banned. You go for Ari, you take the skill matchup in the mid lane here. Gotta see if you can time the distortion with your charm. And Nuno, obviously, seen him multiple times. Buff your AD carry. You're gonna win the fight when it comes to killing the enemy frontline. But H2K here have a bit of everything, honestly. Decent wave clear. You got strong laning in terms of the Nar, in terms of the Caitlyn. The problem for me is just how do you really protect the Caitlyn late game? And he's not here to protect your carry. Nuno can zone with his ulti. But what is a home god Hecarim's gonna say about that? It's like, you know, I'm flying right over you. I think they're gonna depend on on being able to knock him back with a Nar. I mean, it's really, really risky, but you're right. Like, what can you do to keep your AD carry alive against yeah. this team that has like, so much lockdown and kill pressure? So much CC from Fnatic. You got great mobility. LeBlanc can always get to the back line. Ezreal can snipe the back line with his ulti as well. There's so many tools for Fnatic to get to this Caitlyn pick if you do go to the full late game, and that's the one they got to target. So H2K is going to be way more about what they can do in terms of fast pushing with the Caitlyn to create a, uh, a goal lead around the 20 minute mark, and then look for picks with this Ari here and use that to really you know, siege down a tower. Like you get one pick, you put the Caitlyn with, with a block point, and you just destroy the tower. Uh, it looks like Fnatic is going to go the Thresh route for Yellow Star as they lock this one in. The crowd's already getting amped, for Huni especially, as the timer will tick away. Looking at these two comps <laughs> now. Yeah, I Fnatic mean, is going to have to swap. I, 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 I absolutely, think you're right. I, I hate Israel so much in the laning phase. He's <laughs> so passive in many ways. You should never be able to really get a kill on him. Well, he's up against a Caitlyn, too. Yeah, if yeah. You take your lanes. I exactly. think it's kind of a no-brainer to go for the lane. Well, the thing is, situation. Israel is a champion you can put in a in a, in a bad lane and again just sit back and farm. It's true. If, if you want that Hecarim one-on-one, -on -one, but even Nara can do fairly well in the early game against Hecarim, so I wouldn't be surprised to see a swap, and then you just double jungle with Sichuan and Hecarim. Hecarim is one of the best top laners at, at jungling as well. And you can clear it really, really fast. Then you swap back down and you get some decent uh, XP at least, despite being in a swap on a melee champion. Yeah, well, I've, ne I've learned to never underestimate Huni. Hopefully, probably doesn't either. You see him shaking hands there with Daylor as we get ready to load up. This is going to be a pretty explosive game again, I think, to Fischio. If it's going to be as explosive as the last game, that's to be decided. Yeah. But now, it's time for you guys to make the call. Go ahead and tweet us at LLE Sports with the hashtag FNC win if you think this is where Fnatic locks in a first round playoff bye, or if you think H2. H2K is going to be coming out on top. H2K wins your hashtag. The crowd's amped. How about you guys at home? Let's get ready to go on to the rift for Fnatic versus H2K, part two. And which team can finally get a lead at 20 minutes? It's where they both always do so well. Fnatic in terms of the kills, H2K in terms of the towers. And yes, they do have a good setup for fast pushing down a tower. If you have a lane swap, Nuno's great in lane swaps because you just send him when, when you want, well, once you want to kill that tower, you just send him down to the lane with the AD carry, you block ball him, and you just take down that tower in a matter of seconds. And you play around, obviously, having vision control in the early game. So Nuno is great in that department. It's more going to be what can they do to protect that AD carry if they get in a big team fight. If HK does not start getting down these towers early on, Huni will find openings through deep boards, which Fnatic will always go in place. Yellowstar is so good at finding openings to get deep boards down. That's where you get the teleport from a hacker room of home guards. That's where your AD carry says, guys, I'm out. That's it. I mean, I have nothing I can do. Yeah, in that situation. We'll, we'll see how this one goes. We had a brief pause, guys. It looks like we should be getting back into the game in just a moment. But, hey, everybody. Uh, I think you hit on really a good point here about the difference between the two support players. Is that Yellowstar, yeah, he'll get the Roman, he'll get the wards down, he'll make sure he creates pressure around the map, whereas Kasing, he's going to want to set up his carry for some really, really early play. And I want to see yeah. how that dynamic goes down with the head-to-head. This is Kasing's first match against Fnatic, of course. And honestly, it's the two best supports we have at the moment in That's Europe true. fighting against each other, and two really good Romas. Obviously, Yellowstar, always a lot of focus on Division, where Kessing has been very aggressive. Like, he's going to flash in, stun your mid laner, and try and get a kill for Ryu in that lane if he sees an opening. That's another reason for, for well, I guess another reason for both teams, honestly, to, uh, to lane swap, because it opens up for your supports to roam around a lot in the early game. What we have seen is teams give, like, instant level 2 to the Annie, just give it, like, the Gromp. Obviously, help her. She gets a grump and she goes mid. Oh, Yellowstar. He's gonna find Kasing. Yes, he is. And Kasing 
He's got his stun built up, but will he get a chance to use it? Looks like he will. Flash as well. Oh, Hooney. And here comes Hooney once again, looking for first blood, and he gets it, oh, cleaving Kassing in half. All right, and look Hooney here. He didn't start any potions. What he wants to do is do the Raptor Camp, then he goes back to base, and he buys a cloth armor, and then he's really strong. He gets instant level two. The crowd loves him, as always. Now he's going to get even more gold. He's sitting on 600 now, and he kills the Raptor Camp. It's going to be a very strong Hecarim coming back to lane. We will get standard lanes as well. So as we said here, what you can do in that Israel is just sit back and farm. And who knew with that advantage? So they're going to look pretty good in that lane. Yeah, we should be able to push Odoamne back as well. And speaking of Odoamne, he has started the cloth and pots. going to go ahead and back away after he takes down the Razor Beaks. Meanwhile, in the bottom, Steelback Yellowstar able to push up freely as it took Yarn and Kasing. Just a moment to clear out the Krugs themselves. They don't have level two just yet either. There's a teleport for Huni. Back to the lane. Yeah. Gets uh, normally his W second, and that's his sustain together with the flask. Got boots. A bit more damage there, a bit more mobility. Got the cloth armor, of course, and got that instant level two. He's going to bully Oduamne. Oh, yeah. This is exactly the same he did against Overpower last week. Completely the same setup. He just didn't get the first one. So this time it's looking pretty solid for him. On H2K's side, it will start a little bit more normal, but they're already in a slight disadvantage. Let's see where Rainover's going right now, moving towards the Scuttle Crab. He does like to do this, make sure at about three minute mark he's down in there. Who going to dash into Odoamne and knock him right back? Mignar's pretty close, but Odoamne is still pretty low and he's a level down. Kind of careful, don't want to take that fight. So hard for Odoamne to do anything when he's already falling behind. Not even his fault. Kissing. Being caught out, same the Fnatic roaming up, finding him in the bush, giving the first butt over to the Hecarim. So, Rain over, as you said, got the early vision here. Is it already being pinged by H2K? The trade, we saw Lulix do the same on the top side. And then Rain will get a blue buff. He's not going to be able to gank. We'll have to go back to base, where Lulix, of course, is very healthy, but. And Nuno gank early is not always the most effective, especially not against mobility targets like a Lubank, unless they can bait the distortion from February, and then he can go in and force that flash. He's gonna see him though, on the Raptor. To place the ward down, yep. He's able to see exactly where H2K's jungler is. Huni now gets a ward down of his own over by, between the Gromp and the blue buff of H2K, goes right back to lane. Actually fairly even in farm between these two, despite the little edge. Huni's gonna charge right on in as Oduamne hits level four. He's not got nearly enough rage built up though. But it's very good information here early from, from, from Fnatic, you see, they get the ward on the Raptor, they even saw Nuno being there, and as soon as they saw Nuno was on the Raptor on the bottom side, Huni saw an opening to go in and ward on the Grump. So he got some good early wards down. This is a standard three minute one as well, because this one he got from the first blood. Means he can play very aggressively in the lane. Nuno doesn't really have any fancy routes he can take, unless he's gonna run through the lane up for a gank against Hecarim. Like, that's the only route he can take, really. Otherwise, he's gonna have to walk through the river, and that's where this ward should spot him in most situations. Yeah, it levels the, the jungle playing field, especially, because, as you mentioned, Rainover may not have the most... Uh, oh. Oh. oh! Okay, never mind. The potent ganks may still be coming in because that ward expired just in time, but Yarnin is able to move away. Rainover coming right back on in the flail is still flailing. Steelback looks like he wants to pick up a kill himself. Gotta block He's the gonna Q. play back. Kasing now, a three-man stun, and they get nothing. Rainover tried again to flash in here, get the knock up onto Yarnin, but he missed it. Yarnin managed to escape, but there was a lot of summoners being blown. Both sides, honestly, two flashes from Fnatic. Obviously a flash from Yarnin and Ryu. Trying to see if he can land a charm onto Febivan. Still fell low on mana, but... Standard in the mid lane, LeBlanc does have the early pressure, at least onto level 6. She's the one who can jump around Distortion. Decide the fights. Oh yeah, all three flashes blown from Fnatic on that gank and didn't even get the kill. Got to shove in the wave, however, instead, and got a good back timing, so that's okay for Fnatic. Oh, Huni continuing on this chase. Yeah, you mentioned this is, this is Fnatic style. They are one of the bloodthirstiest teams in the LCS here, and it's okay, very calculating. They've kept their losses to a minimum. Take a look back with your bot lane. You can see Fnatics has already backed away that tier picked Ooh. up by Steelback. He's going to be stacking that away, but he wanted yeah. a lot of damage to trade out with, and oh, Arden's no. got a pickaxe. He has zero combat stats in the lane, so he really surrenders the entire lane pressure over to H2K. And it simply means 
Lunix can come down to this bottom lane, blood boil the cake then, and you can fast push it in. And you can get quite some damage. So you slowly chip it down. Once you want to finish it, that's when Lulix joins and you get the first out of turret. It's a thing HK loves to do. And then you rotate the Caitlyn instead, you put a top lane. You do the exact same thing. You slowly take down the tower and you create quite a gold lead from it. Now, Reign of a second gang. Trying on Odo, I'm there. Oh, yeah, there's the hop. Oh, there's the flash. Onslaught of Shadows comes in. Odo Omne is now able to push back, though. Rainover had to give up on it. He didn't have his ult just yet. Lulex, meanwhile, is going to go ahead and start off this dragon. Yeah. And there's nothing Fnatic can do to stop it. Look at the mid lane's been pushed in by Ryo. Bottom lane, we know the Caitlyn is going to push in on this Israel over and over. Maybe Yellowstar can do something. He needs to be careful he doesn't get collapsed on, because Singh is moving up now. Ryo is moving down as well. And obviously, Raynor was on the top side. He's not moving, uh -oh. he's doing the rap. Oh, the charm. Febivin walks right into it. And he can't get involved in this, but there's a teleport coming in for Huni right now. They definitely want to fight over, but it's too late. The dragon, it's already gone. They'll change their attention to Kasing. This stun lands again. But they're not done just yet. The chi chains aren't going to connect Kasing. We'll finally go down, but it's to Yellow Star at the end of the day. And a one support for Dragon is not a bad trade for H2K. Oh, and look at the top lane here now. Odo Omni's going to get quite some damage on that tower. When he had no ulti when he TP'd down, he used it for the gank beforehand. So top tower gonna get poked down. We know the bottom tower is gonna get poked down later, obviously. Home guard Hecarim can return to lane. It's a very early home Pretty, guards. pretty fast. Yeah, so he gets back. It's not too much trouble, but this has allowed Odawamne to really start stacking up some farm against him. He's also got some serious tank stats. The charm's gonna land on Rainover. Orbit Deception and the Foxfire as well. He's got to be careful. Ryu's yeah. looking for some blood. Okay, it doesn't look like much. You lose a bit of damage, you lose a bit of HP on your tower, but it's what H2K want. That's how they get their goal lead in the mid game, by taking out these outer turrets. So, despite falling behind two kills, it's not the worst start ever for H2K. They got the dragon as well. No, not at all. And they're, they're not down by so much gold, too. It's mostly the, it's all the kills, really, that have made the difference. Uh, and actually, in a couple of lanes, we're seeing the farm advantage. Oda Wamne managed to grab some when Huni was gone. They weren't able to stop the dragon. They burned a teleport, so there's a teleport timing advantage here as he, well, not anymore, as Odawame goes ahead and uses it to get back to lane. But, yeah, H2K, they're playing this out very smart, and it's working out well for them despite giving two kills over on Kasing. 79% for Fnatic. Oh, yeah. Don't think you can uh, Can't take really, that away from really them. debate too much anyway. The fan favorites. Yeah, regarding. Uh, Fan support here. H2K is still a fairly new team to the LCS. Haven't really picked up. If you couldn't guess by the Huni chance. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Now, and H2K haven't really picked up too many fans yet, despite having some very good games here in the EU LCS. But of course, if they keep doing it, coming into the summer split as well, I'm sure fans will follow at some point. Now, this bottom lane again. Whenever Steelback is on his own, he just farms safely. That's perfectly fine. He got back and got a pickaxe as well with the second assist. And then Reyno shows up for gank number three. Oh, sorry, it's Huni. And it's not Huni. even Rainover. Yeah, Huni and Yellowstar are moving around. But there we go. The Timbers is going to land the box as well. And Yarnin, there's the true shot barrage. And Huni with the onslaught of shadows is going to pick up his second Kasing now in some trouble as Febivin comes around the side. And even Yellowstar makes it out. That was a top laner coming down to the bottom lane with no teleport. Dives edge to K. Completely shuts down this Caitlyn lane here. Will get a lot of damage on that tower. Meanwhile, Reno went top lane to defend. Ryu is now roaming up there, so they might be able to pick up this tower at least. Nope, only because oh, Huni's back again. He is really fast. Won't even get this one. And suddenly Fnatic getting quite a lead with all these kills. Yeah, Huni's been involved in all of these so far. Rainover's coming up. Still, Odoamne pecking away at that tower. He does get some serious damage, but that is an acceptable trade for Huni, it would appear. Meganar about to happen, but Rainover's here. And will he make his great escape? The Nar into the wall. It's Huni and Rainover who get caught up, but now it's Odoamne win the Glacial Prison. This could be trouble. Huni's taking a lot of tower shots here. Rainover's still going for the chase. Huni, oh, so low. Rainover will finish it up, but they both get battered and bruised. Yeah, and this time there was no dragon for HK to take once Rainover went for this top lane. You can see the pink ward in the tri bush as well up on the top side. Setting up a very easy gank for him. All you gotta worry about now is your bottom lane. But Steelback is sitting, trying to wave that and backs away from this one. Yep. Again though, Staying HK, safe. they keep dying. They keep getting damage on the tower. 
Can it be enough for them? Can they get down these towers then in two, three, four, five minutes? Even out the gold, or will Fnatic be able to just keep making these picks? I mean, again, we've seen a top laner with no TP go to the bottom lane, sit in the bush like a jungler, and then just go for a dive 10 minutes into the game. I mean, who you needs to make some play? Oh, the charm onto Febivin! And he takes a parting shot as well. Gotta be careful against this Ari of Ryu. Look at the wards here from H2K. Full control on the bottom side, bottom side they think. It's only the lanes they can't spot, which is where Fnatic has been coming from a few times. Oh, Everything else button, instead of like. yeah. He... Oh, Odawamne, he's not close enough to the transformation, but he is pushing Huni back with the boomerangs. Very, very tanky here now. Starting to get that way as he gets closer and closer to its Randuin's Omen. Well, Ramna's done a good, good job farming. Now, this is what we mentioned a few minutes ago, how once you want to kill that tower, you just take your Nunu, put it down the lane with the AD carry, and it's a very easy push for you to finish up the tower. At the moment, 1,200 gold for Yarnan, so he's still not very strong. Not really gotten to be a lane bully because of all these ganks from Fnatic on the bottom side, where Nunu is simply not able to respond. But by getting that tower, we know top tower is super low, so if Odom doesn't kill it now, you just swap Yannan up there after this dragon has, uh, is, is going to get killed. And then he just takes that tower for himself. I think Odom should be able to get it now. And you can just go down and you can potentially take a 5 on 5 at the dragon. Yeah, it shouldn't be too much trouble for him to polish that one off indeed. When he's coming here to try and force something after it. But there's the hop and the skip. You take a look at the gold game right now. It is just about dead even, even after that second turret. So two towers roughly equals five kills. Today, also, obviously, a bit, oh. of a, bit of a small uh, farm advantage for, no saw that. for the top lane. What happened? Exactly. So now, rain over and steal back, focusing their attention a little closer on the mid. Dragon's live. Oduwamne actually nearly making our runs right into the brush where Huni was hiding. We'll see what happens in the aftermath of that. Both top laners have their teleports available, but it won't do them any good if they're dead. Fnatic are going to start off this yeah. dragon with three members. Meganar just got popped here. Huni wants to recall now to base so he can sit with his home guards and teleport down if they need him. You can see in the minimap he's recalling now. If HTK wants to fight, they won't have Meganar and they will have to deal with the home guard Hecarim. So they wisely enough go mid lane instead. There's just purely timing on the top laners for them, but this mid tower will take quite some damage. And Odo, I'm the now. Needs to be very careful. It's ignited. There's a true shot barrage coming in too. It looks like it's not going. Oh, it does clip Odoamne as he runs back down towards the middle. H2K have been thwarted there as well. They can't quite polish off the tower. They just need a few more hits. I yeah, know ulti from steel back here. But Blanca has to try and play with distortion. That's a bit tricky for it to do if you're grouping on that tower. So H2K, if they get just a small numbers advantage, they need four guys to three. They will take that tower down. But obviously Fnatic now. Setting up on the sides, they need a pink ward just above the edge here behind this blue buff. And then you have a flank opening for Fabian to come in if H2K wants to group on that tower. If he shows bottom lane here, expect Caitlyn to push up that lane. We'll definitely expect that. Now it is one to one in the Dragons. It is five to zero oh. kills in favor of Fnatic. But H2K are the ones with the objectives. So far, this game has gone exactly as we expected, Deficio. Yeah, kills for one team. Towers for the other one. Not 20 minutes yet. Ryu is going to try and look for a pick. Wants to charm Fibberman. He's got some more damage now. The Abyssal Scepter completed as well as a Fiendish Codex. Yeah, no, reveals no. himself. Just going to go ahead and clear the wave away. Orbit Deception doing a lot of the work for him. Chain's not going to connect and Fibberman walks it out. I don't understand why HK didn't just take mid tower here. You have Nunu coming from the top side. Because think Rico, okay, now they're going to go for it instead. That's fine then. I was about to say, that was a free mid tower for you guys. And there it is, down. Getting the last out of turret now. So suddenly, your wards are going to be pushed up a notch here. You can get it actually into the jungle of Fnatic. You can start spotting these flanks being set up. So suddenly, there's very few openings for Fibberin to go in and try and get to that back line from H2K. It also means if Fnatic ever wants to push on, on the mid out of turret, you're going to need wards in the entrance to the jungle of H2K because you've got to be able to see what's going on. If you get caught in a bad fight and your own outer turret is gone, you have nowhere to run. Yeah, Febivin still trying to play the bait game. Ooh, Ryu, dangerous to go alone! And check the brush, doesn't quite do it. He takes a little bit of damage, but Febivin backs out afterwards. 
fight between Febren, who used to be the H2K mid laner, and Rio, his replacement. He used to be the other Z. Now he's just Rio here in Europe. And this tower is very low, and Rio had to use his ulti, so suddenly he can't really do a whole lot. Let's see if he can hold it. Lolix is there as the good bodyguard. They should be able to do it, but now. Fnatic are eyeballing this mid turret themselves. It's still pretty healthy, and there's a number of H2K members around. Rainover getting dragged up by Yellowstar to look for Oda Wamne, however, as the boomerang hits him in the head. Still looking to find any kills they possibly can around the map. Pings are flying. Febiv and Lulex just look at each other in the brush. Well, Febiv looked at Lulex. Lulex wasn't sure what he was looking <laughs> Laughing a little bit. This is the joy of Caitlyn. Once you get out of the laning phase, you just plant your behinds in the mid lane, and you just sit there, and you just wave clear. Like, that's all you have to do for the next 10, 15 minutes as a caveman. Instead, there's fights all around the map. Huni is getting pretty low here. Megan half mode Omni coming yeah, in soon. It's coming pretty quickly. I think Fnatic's going to try to wall. back away. The Onslaught of Shadows. Ryu takes down Huni. Yellowstar could soon follow. He blows his flash. Ryu's on the chase. He throws the box down, but the charm's gonna connect anyways. Here's Rainover. I think he's gonna leave him for dead, though. And they take him down. It's out of Wamne with the kill. Febivin should be able to get a tower on the bottom, but he's in no rush as he's chasing Lulex away. A couple of laughs, and that snowball goes quite a long ways. Oh, he's down. Oh, not over yet. I'm fighting. Lulex, absolute oh, zero. No, Febivin. No, did nothing. Moves away from it. Yeah. Nuno's not gonna do a whole lot in that tower defense. Instead, Rainover on Kissing. Yes, so Kasing is able to dodge a little bit. There's a teleport now coming in for Hunia. Home guard, Hecarim, here he comes, and Kasing goes down. Smack. Down goes Kasing. This game now has really opened up a lot of crazy fights. I mean, Fnatic were going for that top lane dive before, and H2K responded. It is it's a very close in goal. Three towers, obviously, for H2K, one for Fnatic. In that bottom lane, Febber managed to take it. He's looking good on this LeBlanc. Question is just what can you do in the big team fights? He's gonna be the one with Huni really to dive that back line. Well, it's not the first time, too, that, that Febber's had a good score line and still not had the greatest impact for his team. We'll see if that changes this time around. But for the time being, yes, it is very even. Fnatic, they will take another tower up top. It's finally polished off by Huni. Febivin still just hunting around this bottom side to see if he can get a quick catch out on anybody. Doesn't look to be the case. Next Dragon, less than a minute away, so everyone's starting to eyeball that side of the map. And yeah, this is where these early kills really become important for Fnatic, because it means even though they lost those outer turrets, H2K could never really dominate the map, because they were still behind in terms of items already completed or how strong your champion is at certain points. Oh, oh. oh. there's the Tibbers. Stun. He can jump the wall, though. Yeah, they're going to let him go for that one, but he nearly got That was Tibbers and out. Flash. 20 seconds for this Dragon. TP's down from Huni. He used it before to get that kill. So there's a lot of important spells or, or summoners missing, missing here for this potential fight. And you can see Uruamna. He's going to push in. Huni's not there to defend. So H2K is going to trade another tower for the dragon. And because it's 1 1 in dragons, that's a fine trade to take if Uruamna can take down this tower. Push mid as well. Just go Caitlyn, Nuno, no over reason mid lane. Not to. Go up, get some damage on this mid tower. And then you go up to the top side, get a few deep bolts after you got a few hits on that tower. Three members of Fnatic are backing, though. This tower, it should go down, even though Huni's already back. He's going to get in there for the defense, but uh, it's already at half health. Yeah, they're going to definitely trade this one over. All right, that was fine, yeah. So it stays even. Two tower advantage, or two dragon advantage to Fnatic. And look at the jungle now. Four deep wards were just played, placed from H2K. So they made a good call here, knowing that the home guard Hecarim could probably come back and defend, and therefore they couldn't go for mid lane, instead just went straight top. Yeah, so don't trade, get too greedy. trade the deep towers or the deep wards and the tower for the dragon. Now she's back defending mid lane, and it's a good trade then from H2K's side. Oh, Rainover comes in. The hook does not connect on Otawamne, but Rainover is going to get pulled back as he gets stunned. Courtesy of the Thresh Lantern, failing him out of a bad situation. H2K now, five members up in the middle. Huni, however, is looking to push out in the top. Now giving a little bit of ground here, and they're perfectly fine to do it because they've got some wave clear to do up in the top and bottom. I'm not going to push in on anything. Both side lanes are going to push back now from Fnatic's side, and H2K need at least one of them pushing in if they want to go mid lane and use the Nunocade. 
You don't really want to fight at this point here if you are H2K. You only sit on a, on an advantage on Caitlyn. She's very weak in a straight up team fight at this point here. She's gonna get one shot by Huni if he comes in with the home guard, or close to at least. So you don't want to team fight if you are H2K. You want to keep trying trade objectives and play around the map itself. It's just so annoying against the Hecarim. I mean, he's so fast at moving between the lanes. You need multiple wards to spot him coming down from the side. And you cannot push too far forward if you don't know if every single ward behind you is cleared, because then he has an option to teleport to. So it's really, really tough. HK going to have to move like super slowly forward. Always worry about the flanks. And that's really where Fnatic is going to have that edge because of this Hecarim pick. Just like that, they managed to knock themselves down another tower. Yes, indeed, the Hecarim has been causing some headaches for H2K. And he's just going to go ahead and start up on the blue, but there's a few members there to defend. You might want to think twice about that one. It's been part of every single kill. Either yeah. He picked it up himself, but he got the assist. It's been a lot of action in that top lane, but he's also been able to get across the map. Here comes the Ezreal. Oh! Ah, oh. The, uh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no he no, didn't get it. No. It was really close, baited, though. Baited, baited, That's a uh, that wipe the so off your forehead moment for you, though. <laughs> that was so close to get that steal. So steal by here, despite having a tough laning phase, or, well, on paper against the Caitlyn, because of these early ganks, he got that early tier. He's been fully stacked already. He's going to get Trinity Force very soon as well, once he goes back the next time. And then he's really hit the mid-game spike off in Israel, where he's going to be extremely strong, at least for the next few fights. If Fnatic wants to go for them, and of course they do. They're just waiting for that one teleport to be ready. It's up now. Get a D-Ward placed, and if H2K ever steps too far forward, you TP him behind, you kill them. So... This is going to be a point again for H2K where they don't really have anything they can do. Now there are three guys on the bottom side. And there's no vision of this Baron. Ryu showed himself there's zero wards on the Baron now, and there's so many wards around him from Fnatic. This is going to be a free Baron. Yeah, oh, there goes the blue trinket, but they've still got a lot of damage to polish it off. And there's no smite anywhere near it. It does get taken down. Fnatic, they sneak it quite handily at 23 and a half. Play they've made before with these early Barons, and H2K having zero wards around it. And three guys on the bottom side. Anyway, there's a, a wave pushing, but you can't really go for it. Again, there's too many wards for Fnatic. You can see how Huni's pinging on the minimap here. He's going back to base. He has home guard now. He can TP in behind. If H2K stay in this mid lane, he's going now. They are coming in. Oh, oh Tony, he gets a Tibbers on his head, but that's not going to stop Fnatic to slow him down for a second. Yarnin, Onslaught of Shadows onto him. Can he get stay alive? I don't think so. Tony picking him up. Because he's just going to get melted after the fact. Two for none, just like that. And a Baron up Fnatic charging down the mid lane. And really, what what is H2K going to use this Caitlyn for if you can't even stand in the mid lane any longer? It is so hard. And remember, H2K banned Rumble and Lissandra. Left the Hecarim open for Huni to pick. Well, much to the crowd's pleasure, you cannot stop the man in Fnatic's top lane. And H2K cannot stop that second turret going down. Fnatic have just been on a tear. And now they're looking for top, roaming together to try and take yet another objective. Dragon's about a minute away as well. And this one, H2K should be able to come in and at least sit nearby and stop Fnatic from pushing it. You got Caitlyn, you got Ari, so your wave play is decent. As we can see, Fnatic are backing away. Obviously, Hecarim, Hecarim needs his TP back before we can see the next big play from them. But then you just go back, you keep doing one three one setup, you push down these lanes here. And again, if there's just one mistake in the in, in the warding from H2K, Huni will find an opening, or Fabian will find an opening to sneak in behind. And you do exactly the same. And Caitlyn is going to do nothing for 10, 15 minutes more. And that right. really is a problem for H2K. They got the outer turrets down, but because they lost so many kills, they were not strong enough to apply pressure on the map after and push the next towers. And this is it too, because though they have a, a teleport advantage window and they know Huni can't necessarily come out of nowhere and make big plays, as long as he stays with the team, there's not a lot H2K can do here. You see the Dragon Shrine, or rather the Scuttlecrab Shrine around Dragon cleared away. Oh, Ryu, they're gonna try to make the play here right now. Yellow Star taking a lot of damage as the teleport comes in for Odawamne, but Kasing already down. Rainover in the mix. Odawamne gets caught on a hook. And now, Rainover, Garden is oh so low. Steelback is gonna be the one that picks him up with a true shot barrage. And a dragon on top will come after this, but they're not done yet. Rainover burning away. Let's see if he can grab himself a little bit of health back. Huni in the front. 
They're gonna catch Ryu oh, as well. Oh, and he just gets taken down. Oduamne, he's got a bail out of there. Rain over is oh so low, but they just don't have the damage to finish anyone off. And it's a three for zero for Fnatic. Forget the yeah. dragon. They're looking at inhibitor turrets. And remember, he still got the power buff at least for a few seconds. Now it's gone, but the minions were just buffed up. They're gonna push this one and get inhibitor. You can go back, recall, reposition for that dragon. You got time because there's still 20 seconds on Ari here. Because thing obviously getting poked down again. He has not but had a great game. H2K cannot team fight. The only thing they can do at this point is either get a pick, which is what they tried to do, or aim to push down a tower. But you're never going to get in that position because you're falling so far behind. Look here. Fight is on. Ryu tried to set up a pick. That's fine. But Kasing ends up dying. We know Fabian loves to kill these supports here. And then the fight is on. Pony joins in. Ulti over the wall. No damage from your Caitlyn. She's already dead as well. And yeah. I mean, when you've got a Gnar about to go Mega having to flash away from the fight, something has gone horribly, horribly wrong. Here Ryu eats another hook. And from there, it's just Fnatic rolling all over. H2K, they grab themselves the dragon on the way out. They managed to get away. Everything's back to where it was before. But Yarnin, he's got to be careful. That little block's starting to get pretty deadly. So I think we've answered the question this time that Febivin has definitely been a, a very large part of the team play in this particular game, Deficio. It's been uh, at least getting some very good picks. He got a good split push early as well. But really, I mean, again, it's we talk so much about Huni, and there's a reason. The guy has been part of nine kills on his Hecarim. Five for himself. He's been all over the place. And you can just see here, Kissing has been the target a few times. Zero, six, and zero. And then obviously, Jan in the next one. This is really the no problem. protection. They, they don't have a lot of tanks. The only one they've really got is Oda Wamne, and that's situational. Yeah. Exactly. So it is always a tricky one. If, if you have like a comp that's built around like fast pushing down towers and Yes, you can get the outer, outer ones, but if you can't keep pushing that lead, you don't really have anything you can start do. Start to fall behind. If, if you start falling behind with a cop like this, there's so little you can, especially against all the engagement from Fnatic, all the mobility from them. And that's obviously why this game is so one-sided now, because Fnatic are a team who really knows how to push that mid-game lead. I didn't even see who was ahead of 20 minutes, despite us always talking about it. Two teams who often have the lead at 20 minutes. No, I think we've answered the question of who gets the lead. Maybe not at 20 minutes, but now that we're at 29, for sure. Fnatic are the ones pushing on forward. Remember, they get a win here. They lock into that number two playoff seed. Owning the head-to-head -head against H2K, if that happens. Yeah. Got it in their sights. Obviously, number two in the standings will be facing the winner of number three against number six from the quarterfinals, which at the moment would be H2K against Copenhagen Wolves. Winner of that game will then face Fnatic in the semifinal, and then SK Gaming would face the winner of Gambit and Unicorns of Love, as it looks right now. Well, even if it changes, right now it's looking pretty good for Fnatic, that's for sure. H2K going to try to set up a bit of a trap, and one of the few brushes not warded out by Fnatic. We'll see if they take the bait. I feel like Fnatic might know a little bit more about death brushes, though. They do. And they also know about taking a massive wave and pushing down a tower. HK were clearing super minions in the mid lane. I believe so, at least. I'm not sure what else they were doing in the mid lane. But this tower is down super, super easily. It's basically just going to be a matter of time for, for Fnatic here and see how fast they do want to end. Take another Baron. HK, if they show up and try and fight for this one, it's all Fnatic so, wants. Look at your minimap here. Who needs just sitting, on the sitting in that base, yeah. Yep. They want to start this Baron, they're going to say, HK, come, come stop, please. We got multiple wards behind you where we're going to teleport on, and we are going to destroy you. Oh, they've caught Lulex. That's the teleport. That's the start. Here comes the teleport in. Lulex taking oh so low. Huni just oh, calling around Yarnin. the side, and he gets the flank on. They are going to get the Glacial Prison. Rainover is going to make that fight start out really, really well for Fnatic. Odawamne with the big Gnar knocks him back for just a moment, but that's not going to be for very long. He's taken down. That's four kills for Fnatic. They're pushing in. They could end it right here. Oh, they will end it, Pyrus. Such a good game from Fnatic. Once we get to that mid game, every single time they make some plays and don't give Hecarim to Fnatic. It's the perfect champion for them. You cannot ban out Huni. He's got at least four champions. You absolutely have to respect. Hecarim proved to be one of him. So much kill participation in this game. Fnatic, they take the 2-0 against H2K all time this spring. And they are the number two seed here in Europe. Oh, oh, oh.
Yeah, as we said, this guarantees them a spot in the semi-final and also a trip to Madrid. Where we will have oh, the yes. final. Obviously, the winner's match and then the match for third place. So we're going to see Fnatic and SK Gaming for sure at the moment in Madrid. And honestly, I mean, this game... Early kills for Fnatic, as expected. Early tower pushing from H2K, as expected. They got down these outer turrets, but then simply, if you also look at the comp here, it was just too weak to keep pushing on. And because there was this Hecarim who could always teleport in behind you, you could never really set up proper pushes. You couldn't get to the tier two towers. And that's why you couldn't use that Caitlyn. And suddenly she falls into a bit of a slump where she just sits and be like, okay, I need 10, 15 minutes of farm. Otherwise I'm not gonna do anything. And that's why Fnatic just snowballed the game. Yeah, and this really comes down to them just being able to fight much better, being able to force uh, the picks and then go full hog in that game. Three of the members of Fnatic did not die. There were only two kills for HK. They were so prioritized with taking down the towers. And then when they got stopped, Fnatic turned up the heat so quickly. You can see how happy they are to be locking in that number two seed for the spring playoffs. First round bye. Very, very important. Super important, of course. You really, you get to scout as well. The team, you're gonna get to watch their best out of five in the quarterfinals and you can, you can learn so much because for a team adapting, you know, from one week to another, that's really tough when it comes to, you play five games potentially, everything is gonna be shown for Fnatic. They can see how you play from behind, how you play when you head, how do you close out games, what kind of comp compositions do you build? And then suddenly if you do, I mean, you have a week on it to change for that team who has to face Fnatic, who's now gonna get two weeks of extra practice and time to prep. So really, really important to get that uh, buy here. And of course we got the standings again.